Okay, so I'm here with the creative team behind uh, Philip K. Dick's Electric Dreams. Ron, tell me about how you, how you got involved with this and, and what you wanted to uh, accomplish with the show. Oh, well, I got a call from Issa, and um, as soon as she said it, I was like, thought that's a great idea. You know, I didn't really know the short stories. I knew the books a little more, but I just knew that you know, there'd be a wealth of material there. I'd never done an anthology, but it sounded like a really fun, different project to get involved with. And uh, then I uh, heard from Michael Denner, and then we, the more we talked about it, and David coming on and Brian Cranston, as we just sort of you know kicked around the idea, it became clear that you know there was such a rich vein to mine here that we could bring in different writers for each one and different directors, and that every artist that came into the project could really bring you know their own take on the material. Then we set out to sort of say, you know, be inspired by this, and whatever inspires you in, in these individual stories, go with that. There's not one way to adapt these. Mm -hmm. We're looking for people to sort of bring their own you know artistic. Uh, uh, point of view to it, and just it was an exciting project from the very beginning. He says the you're the the caretaker, so to speak, of the Philip K. Dick uh, legacy, right? Um, are you fine with them with, with the freedom that some of the filmmakers may take uh, with each of their little movies? Because it, it's got to be a little bit tricky for you in terms of your role here. In terms of you want it to be faithful to your father's work, but you want them to have that freedom to do what they need to do. Yeah, not just fine, but enthusiastic and um, really, really, I think we made a point of saying, we want you to make this your own. You brought to this because you have a certain talent and a sensibility and we believe in that. We want, we want your PKD. Uh, so that was, th these were supposed to be sort of springboard, you know, stories. And as long as, you know, there wasn't anything contrary to sort of the general ethic of it in terms of, you know, what it means to be human and all of that. And, and that didn't happen. It was just make this your own, fly, and let us know how we can support you in that. But that was really so. the setup from the beginning to in, encourage, you know, individual points of view and to take the stories and run, you know, take the baton and run with it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the great thing is that, you know, some of the writers, you know, we, we, we started first with the stories and then we started with writers that we, whose work we really admired. And to some, writer, some writers came in with a story that they'd always loved and they wanted to do. Some writers were familiar with the work whether it be on the page or on the screen, and we would send the material, you know, kind of we, we cast them, what seemed like a good piece of material for them. But the great thing is that every writer that, that did one in this, first, in this first year of the show, it, it feels personal. It feels like they brought something that really was important yes. to them. I was gonna say, I mean, I just think of each of the individual stories. When you decided that, what, that you wanted to do a father thing, it's because you really wanted to explore making a movie about fathers and sons. When Jack Thorne came to us and said, I want to do the commuter, it's because, and we didn't know this at the time, he only announced it to us at our table read, was that in his family there was a history of uh, mental illness and violence, and, and although they were, you know, things had, were, were good now, he was reflecting on his, on his own experiences. And for Tony, he brought this Pink Floyd notion yeah. to Crazy Diamond because of his obsession with the music. And that ultimately even isn't really in the story as it was finished, but it was so much a part of the inspiration of the story as you wrote it and as we tried to figure out how to make it. And Tony's a narrative anarchist, which is yes, which, is great. which was great. That's <laughs> right. So, but I was going to say too, but yeah. he'd also worked with us on a PKD That's biopic right. prior to that, and was really immersed in you know PKD and really got. So there's there's a lot in that one that may not be in the story, but. The, the the way that he approaches the characters and it's all PKD. He, he was you know, channeling your dad. He was yeah. absolutely. And